dispensers. I'm Orlando and I welcome you to Nightly Arts. This channel will talk mainly about HEMA, which stands for Historical European Martial Arts. Now, HEMA is not a martial art itself, but it's more like a big box that contains all those combat forms, all those fighting systems that were widely practiced in Europe in a time frame that goes around from the Victorian age backwards which is of course a lot of stuff and it needs to be seen in its correct context in order to be fully understood. The subject is very very wide and we will not be able to cover every aspect of the historical European martial art therefore we will concentrate mainly on three parts, three aspects. The longsword concentrating specifically in the German tradition, but also picking a bit in the Italian style. Also the Spanish destreza, which is the study of the Spanish rapier and all of its variations. Uh, rapier and dagger, rapier and cloth, and so on. And also the typical street fighting style, I-33, which was practiced with the one-handed sword and the buckler. The buckler is the small shield, not the big one, the small one. How is this channel going to work? We will start every episode by talking about the subject of the day and giving some basic information. We will then obviously go back to the source and examine the historical treaty or the source that we are taking in consideration to understand the technique. We will then move to our sala d'armi, or simply <laughs> the gym, and try to recreate those techniques thanks to the words of the master themselves. We will gain confidence and speed and build it all the way up to full contact. So since this is the pilot episode, the first episode of what I hope is going to be a long series, we will start with the most popular weapon in the HEMA community, the longsword. So we will start with some basic movements, like really very, very basic. Two basic cuts, the Hoberau and the Hunterhau, we will explain you what they are, and two basic guards, the Hawks and the Flug, we will explain those as well. There are also other stances, but we will treat them later on. But I just want to give you an example, just so you can have an idea of what we're going to deal with in the future. For example, this guard is called the Vom Tag. Now, this is just one interpretation of it. There is also a second one. But the Vom Tag is considered the guard of the roof. This is because of the position of the sword above the head that covers mainly the whole upper side of the body. We then have the Hawks, one of the guards we will uh, talk about today, which obviously is uh, inspired by the horns of an ox. Its main purpose is to stop Hoberhaus or high strikes and it always represents a threat with its point always pointing at the target. We have also the Langenord, or long point. <laughs> now this card can talk by itself. It's one of the main guards used to keep distance and it's very frustrating for everyone just to get past it. Then we have the Flug, that it's mainly a guard that uh, has the purpose of covering a whole side of the body, which can be both left or right. It's uh, considered a low guard and it works perfectly for low strikes, but it can also serve for high strike if need be. And then we have the Halber, which is called also the Guard of the Fool. It's called like this because it's performed by holding the sword down, which seems a pretty stupid thing to do during a fight, right? <laughs> well, no, it was not. We will also said, as I anticipated, treat two basic cuts, which are the Hoberhau, which means the cut from above, and the Hunterhau, which means, you guessed it, the cut from below. 
So let's put everything into its correct context before we even start explaining and let's go meet Philip that will introduce us to the beautiful history of the German tradition of fencing. Hello, this is Phil from La Compagnie Medievale. Today we're going to see a short history of the German tradition of fencing, also called the Kunst des Fechtens, or the KDF in the world of historical European martial arts, what we commonly call HEMA. It is also commonly referenced as the Lichtenauerian tradition, for the master that lays down its uh, bases, Johannes Lichtenauer. Lichtenauer's teachings are preserved in the Zettel, a cryptic recital that is used as a basis by subsequent German fencing masters as a basis for their art. No version written by Lichtenauer survived, unfortunately, but we can see some versions of the Zettel that are transcribed by the other German masters, and we can see it in their own treatises. Through all those other treatises, we can place Johannes Lichtenauer's life to probably the early 15th century. It is told that he traveled Europe to develop his own art and developed it against fencers that knew nothing of the moves that he established in the Zettel. That is why we think that it was written in such a cryptic way so that the others couldn't really understand it and derive the teachings from just the text. What we know of Lichtenauer's Zettel was given to us in glosses by other masters. Glosses are a, a short interpretation or can be used as footnotes in other works, but in this case, as we can see on the image, there's uh, more text in the interpretation than the original text. The original text is in red in the image and the interpretation is in black. What we know of Lichtenauer's Zettel was given to us by other masters in glosses or short interpretations. Glosses are usually shorter than the original text, but as you can see in the image here, the original text is in red and the interpretation is in black. The interpretation is way more complicated than the original, and it gives us a way better idea of the movement we should be executing than what the short verse originally tells us. We find glosses by masters such as Paulus Kau, Chud Lev, and Peter von Tanzig, and many more, but those are the most common that you're gonna see. We can also find several other masters that added their own knowledge and teachings to the German fencing tradition. For example, Hans Tallhofer, while not necessarily a descendant of the Lichtenauerian tradition, was a German fencing master in the 15th century that wrote us uh, several descriptions of fighting arts, uh, siege weapons, uh, mercenary life, and even judicial duels. So it's a very important part of under understanding the German art of fencing. Paulus Hector Maia, or Mayer, depending how you want to pronounce it, was a member of high society in Augsburg in Germany. Actually, he was not a fencing master, but a collector of German fencing manuals and texts. Meyer collected an impressive number of such texts in his life and used his family's great wealth to finance his passion and also impressive parties for the rich of the town. Unfortunately, eventually his money ran out and he started stealing from the city coffers to finance his passion and parties for the rich. This is probably the, one of the reasons that he wasn't caught earlier is that people were in on it but enjoying the ride. When he was caught in 1579, he was hung as a thief. Despite his dramatic and dishonorable end, he is recognized as one of the most important figures in the German tradition only because he preserved and completed such texts and left them to us as they were acquired by the Library of Augsburg after his death. Joachim Meyer is one of the most well-known masters of the German fencing tradition, mostly because of his treatise, The Art of Combat. This treatise is very interesting because it presents a very complete system. In it we can find various weapons such as, obviously the longsword, the dusak, the sidesword that Meyer calls a rapier, and quarterstaff, poleaxe, polearm, and more. 
As such, it is a very common reference in the world of Hema, but it must be put in its context, at least for the longsword part. When the treatise was published in 1570, the place of the longsword on the battlefield was dubious at best, and in fencing competitions, thrusts between German fencers were prohibited because they were too deadly. As such, it is a very interesting system to study, but it must really be put in its context, and if you try and use it against another system of longsword, you might encounter some difficulties. Or not, if you're good. <laughs> Everything you will be taught through Knightly Arts on our YouTube channel will be referenced through any and all of those sources, and we will always put the reference that we are working with in the video description, so you can find the text and work on it yourself. So, learning about the history of the Lichtenauerian tradition is all well and good, but we're all here to learn how to fight, right? So, I'm gonna show you a few basic things straight out of Joachim Meyer's The Art of Combat. First of all, the first thing you need is what we call the Oberhal, or the high cut. The high cut is a straight cut direct from above at your opponent's head toward his scalp. So basically any cut that comes from above, straight down, or in an arc, is called an Oberhal. Another thing you need is the low cut, the Unterhal. The words in this are pretty complicated, but don't worry about it, we're, we're gonna break it all down for you. This one you execute thus. Cut into the right ox, and as soon as you reach your opponent, then step and cut across from below at his left arm, so that you come up over your head with your quillions. Thus you have executed it. And I'm also gonna show you two guards or stances that you can use to parry most basic attacks. The first one I'm gonna show you is the ox, where you have your hands above your head. As Master Meyer says, the upper part of the combatant is allotted to the ox, and as that has two quarters, the right and left, so one can divide the posture of the ox into two parts, namely, the right and the left. The right ox is done thus. Stand with your left foot forward and hold the sword of the hilt up by your head on the right side so that your point extends toward your opponent's face. It's very important when you're in the ox that your hands are actually a bit above your head, so you can cover and yourself properly. For the left ox, position yourself opposite to this, that is, stand with your right foot forward and hold your sword to, with the hilt by your head on the left side as I have said. Thus you have both ox guards or postures. Another guard or posture that you're gonna use a lot is the plow. As Master Meyer says, the, low, the lower part of the combatant belongs to the plow, and as that has two quarters or two sides, you guessed it, the right and the left. Both are in essence merely the position of a thrust from below. Execute the right plow as follows. Stand with your right foot forward, hold your weapon but with the hilt by your forward knee, aim the tip or point at your opponent's face as if you intended to thrust him from, from below. Thus you are in the right plow. If you stand with your left foot forward and do the same thing, then you are in the left plow. Meyer's take on the plow is very interesting in the fact that, for once, you have the hands on the side of your uh, front foot. Usually in the guards, it's the other way around. This was a fill from La Compagnie Medieval for Knightly Arts, and this is all that we have for interpretation today. Thank you for watching, now back to Orlando.